Hi, I'm going to show you how to start up Eclipse to do the Minix uh, debugging. Um, you have to install Eclipse first. You can download, best is to download the, Mini, the Linux uh, all in one uh, package. Then you can go to OptiI uh, or Code Compose Studio Eclipse. You can have an Eclipse.ini or a uh, Eclipse.ini. And that uh, might need some tweaking, like increasing the the, the heap uh, the heap size for uh, for uh, to be able to run uh, Minix uh, in Eclipse. Um, to install Eclipse, I used Getlibs, which is a program to install uh, x86 binaries, and not 64 bits. Uh, but if everything works well, oh yeah, and you also have to disable a few of the annoying uh, things of a uh, human uh, Ubuntu for human beings which is uh, auto mounting has to be disabled because when you insert SD cards it's just a pain to DD them if they get auto mounted so you spend most of the time doing that uh, disabling USB uh, the, sorry the modem manager because that one also always connects to um, to your serials and start messing around with them and if you're doing some network, you need to configure your, your network uh, config uh, pretty well. Um, I'm going to do this uh, demo on a uh, Beagle uh, Bone White, which is just an amazing uh, development board because it's got a single USB connection and it's, it's got, it gives you uh, two serials, one for uh, accessing a serial and one for, for JTAG. It gives you access to USB, uh, a host controller, so it's it's a good uh, nice development board. Uh, I'm gonna start Code Compose Studio. I removed everything, but I don't know if everything is gonna be need to be done again. So we'll we'll go through it. It's a bit painful to uh, to uh, to get started, but uh, you will see that the benefits are are quite uh, quite great. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a, a project for, for Minix. I'm going to using the free license. I'm going to create a project for, for Minix so I can do a basically the same thing I did with uh, uh, GDB, but then uh, on the real hardware. So I'm going to create a new project, Code Compose Studio project, which I'm going to call mm, Minix minus ARM. BB, something like this for BeagleBoard, BeagleBone, I'm going to use it, my current um, project directory, so that's um, arm BB source, okay, you will need to do all kinds of things like disabling auto build and you have to do a lot of stuff, but let's see if it, how it goes, here we should see a Beagle, oh yeah, that's a bit shame. No, oh, that's strange. Right, so I'm gonna target three uh, the AM35X series, but I expected a Beagle bone already in in there. The variant is also no good, so there's something wrong here. So this will not work. Oh, let's see it still continue to see if it will work but I think this is just no no good I'm missing I think I it's it's I didn't install the the packages for um, for TI uh, processors something failed yeah okay not such a big deal let's just see uh, if we can connect to uh, to our board. Uh, to do that, I will need to just connect my board. Let me see here if I uh, was doing a DD or so. Right, that one happens. All right, I'm going to remove this one. I'm going to plug in the, the bigger bone. And do the mess. And here you see that uh, the bigger bone gets uh, recognized. There's a. Uh, that's also weird. There's uh, a one port reserved for JTAG and the other port is for uh, for serial. So I can now do something like. Uh, 
But before that, I first need to move my card into the bigger bone. I'm gonna press the reset button on the board. Here it goes and uh, goes booting. All right, so it's booting right now. Um, right now I'm gonna create. Um, I'm gonna view my target configuration. I'm gonna create a new one to debug Minix. And um, oh, this is really small. Uh, Beagle. So the thing that, that we're doing now is we're configuring the JTAG uh, scan chain to co to use the Beagle board. Uh, oh, it is. Here's the Beagle board. I want the Beagle bone. So now what we're doing is we're configuring the JTAG scan chain to include some devices in the in the the tree, and uh, that will allow us to inspect uh, different parts of the of the system. Uh, I'm going to save it right now. My configuration. I need to edit it a bit afterwards. Hello. Also, you see the indexer running there. And like I said, you need to tweak your project quite a bit before it, it gets usable. So, a few things you have to do. Actually, to just disable auto build, otherwise, uh, well, it's it's using the it's using it's trying to use its own compiler, and that just <laughs> doesn't uh, doesn't uh, work like that. Tweaking the system to really call the build system, you can do that, but that's also uh, for not uh, important for now. So I'm gonna not gonna build, I'm not gonna generate make files. Uh, I don't not gonna build them automatically. I'm gonna not gonna do incremental builds. I'm not gonna clean. I'm just gonna do not much. Environments. Okay. Right, we're back here. And if it's where, it, oh yeah, here's my. This is my target, uh, my Beagle target configuration. I I'm going to go to advanced, and this is uh, the st a scan chain. So the JTAG scan chain really is a well a shift registers over different uh, devices, and uh, what you'll see here is that there are there's different uh, devices in the uh, uh, scan chain, and uh, we're only interested really in the Cortex A8. So the rest you can go, and if you want, you can say bypass. I'm not going to do that, but it's, you can do that. The other thing you need to do is to remove the initialization script for the Beagle born for the for the Cortex, because what we're going to do is we're going to just boot. We're going to let you boot initialize the board and everything. So you you don't want the, bo the uh, when you connect to your bo to reinitialize your your board. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this this uh, this part of it. I'm going to save. Now test my connection. Yeah, perhaps I need to cancel the index or I don't know. <coughs> right, I will just show you at the start, it just said it again. I think I, mo I modified the wrong, uh, wrong file there. So we're, gonna, we're not going to restart, but the file I needed to, uh, to modify is different. Right. Let's see if we can connect to the to our target uh, target configurations. I'm gonna say uh, launch selected configuration. So this is really just gonna launch uh, the configuration. Just connect to the to the port, and we can we'll be able to do a little bit of of, of work there, but not not very much. Again, it's great to have a big screen. Uh, the cortex. I'm gonna connect to that one.
I might get some warnings. It, it depends a bit. It's, it's a bit shaky, but not as worse, not as bad as Open OCD. Right, so now uh, actually the, the processor has really stopped and an address uh, which starts with F04, which is which is really in the kernel. We can see it also, we're in supervisor mode. Uh, we're in ARM, a little engine. MMU is turned on. And as the device is paused, I can type here, but nothing and nothing happened. I'm going to continue again. And all of a sudden uh, the input uh, happened here. Right. I'm going to stop it again. I go hope I'm going to end up in the kernel. Yes, I'm ended up in the kernel. All right. So if you have this, you can uh, just already do quite a few useful things. You can view, uh, well, your memory. You can enter, uh, depending on the configuration which is here, you can enter virtual addresses or physical addresses. Overall, the, because you're debugging from the view, from the viewpoint of the, the cortex, uh, all addresses are, are virtual normally. Um, I can see my current reg registers, my core registers, uh, program counter, uh, stack pointer, uh, link, all that stuff. I can see that. Uh, not only that, but I can also, because of the integration with the system, I can look at all kinds of other registers. So yesterday we looked at uh, I2C, and here I can really see a lot of information about, and documentation about all the fields that are that are present. So that's very, very, very nice to uh, to use. Uh, well, you can do the disassembly, of course, uh, of your code running. It's very nice to have a big screen again. So here you've got the, uh, the assembly. I don't really like that style. Right. Um, perhaps I can show you one more thing. Is is if I'm I'm stopped right now, I can load symbols, of course. And that will uh, do uh, be allow me to do the same thing I did with um, the previous demo. So I'm going to go to uh, arm. Okay, and now I know exactly where it's uh, where the device is, is stopped. It's, it's, it was doing a contact stop just uh, just right now. I can, uh, and it's a it's a quite luxury way to to look at uh, at your kernel code because you can really inspect all variables. There's a proc pointer, so the current the current process or the switch process, well, stopping process. So it's going to be P is going to be the process going to be currently being stopped, and uh, I think that has a name field. Uh, cycles. So there's here the process name. I can kernel. <laughs> you can also do something like view a string. Um, <coughs> uh, it here perhaps the value. Just a string or something, and you will be. No, oh, it sees it the kernel anyway. This is a kernel, and then that's it. So you can really do amazing thing if you want to uh, debug uh, debug um, Minix, but also other processes. All right, thank you.